Well, as I've said on many occasions, it's so nice to be able to talk with um, teachers at our school, but it's even better and great fun to talk with students in the school. So I've got two of the uh, two students from grade six here with me, the two, uh, the mighty grade six, isn't yes. that correct? Yes. Well, Chloe, you need to introduce yourself first. Who are you? All those sorts of cool things. Tell me about yourself. Um, my name is Chloe, like you just said. Um, I come from Italy and Lebanon. I... What? Yeah. That's awesome. Two? Tell me about the two sides of the family. So you've got, you said Italy and Lebanon. That is an amazing combination. Yeah. Tell me about, tell me about it. Okay, so um, it's kind of confusing because I got like two countries that have a lot of culture. Mm. So it's two different, two whole different yeah, spices yes. and different types of food. So well, imagine, imagine if you've got Italian and Lebanese. Yeah. That is amazing. So what, what side of the family is Italian? My dad's side. Your dad's side, and then and your my mom. mom is Lebanese. So right. it's like home because I don't do the regular stuff. I get this type of bread <laughs> called um, focaccia, and I put it inside hummus. Oh, I love that! But that's it's lovely. an Italian bread with an oh, Arabic it is. sauce. You're, you're mixing the two, so yeah. that, so that gives you an amazing understanding of different cultures and different parts of the world. How many languages do you speak? Five. What? Yeah. Name them. Italian, Arabic, English, um, Spanish, and Korean. A little bit of oh Korean. Not gosh. a lot of Korean, but Seriously, yeah. I'm, I'm really good at one. English? Why are you laughing? <laughs> 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 but thanks, Chloe, and we'll come back to you in a minute. Mm -hmm. But the other person we have to introduce is Hanel. So tell me about Hanel, introduce yourself. Where, where are you from? What's your cultural background? What's your heritage? I'm from Korea and Spain, and... Um, my mom's side is Korean and my dad's side is spy, okay. Spanish. Okay. So you speak Korean and Spanish? I have no idea how to speak Spanish. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but do your parents speak to you in Spanish sometimes at home? Sometimes. Really? Yeah. So what, my dad. So your dad speaks some Spanish to you? Yeah. And mum speaks Korean to you? Yeah, and English. And English to you. Okay. So we know that Chloe's got five languages. <laughs> how, many, how many languages do you speak? I could say four. Really? Tell me, what are they? Uh, Chinese, Korean, English, and could I say Spanish? You could say a little bit of Spanish. I can only introduce myself. Oh, that's okay. But if your dad speaks to you in Spanish, do you understand what he's saying to you? Uh, sometimes <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> do you tell him that? No. <laughs> well, you might hear this and understand. Well, I don't want to upset him. <laughs> that's, very, that's very kind of you to do that. Well done. Well done. China, let me just go back to Chinese. How do you, where's that, where's that come from? Uh, so when I was like just born, mm -hmm. we moved to China ah. and my dad started to work. He yeah. made this company right? and then I stayed there for the rest of my life. So, then, so how many years were you in China for? Eight years and more. Wow. Okay, so were you at a Chinese school or were you at an international school or how was your school in there? I was in an international school, so I just spoke Chinese most of the time to my friends. So. Did you really? Have you managed to keep that going now that you're in Korea? No, I don't know. Barely Chinese. Oh, anymore. no, no. Well, I mean, it's um, it's fascinating for, for the two of you, you know, um, Chloe, you've got such a wonderful cultural, well, you both have got amazing cultural backgrounds, and I think that's, again, as I find with the teachers, <laughs> but it's so nice to hear that students have got the same, and the fact that, you know, you can talk about languages and where you're from and where you've lived and um, and the foods, which we'll touch on, maybe the next conversation we have uh, with Chloe. But, um, Hanul, Chloe, thank you so much for spending some time having a chat with me. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. And we are live. Um, <laughs> I don't. I, <coughs> hello, Mr. Johnson. I was going to start beatboxing into oh, the Yeti. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure how to uh, to introduce you. I know um, it's kind of uh, like the titles, the King of Kings, and you know it's a big long. I understand. <laughs> well, how, how do I introduce you? I mean, I, I I made a joke yesterday to you when I said, oh, I think there are most people in the high school will know you, most people in middle school will know you, and maybe some will know you in elementary, and then I just laughed because I think 
You've been around this place for so long. How long have you been at the school for? Ten. Ten years? Yeah, almost as long as you. <laughs> that goes back a long, long time. How did you end up in Korea? Because you're obviously not from Korea, but how did you end up in Korea? I got invited to teach at a university in Jinju. Uh, Where's that? Night. Where's that? That's about two hours directly west of here. Uh, so Jinju is about 30 minutes from Chang Wan, oh, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. a little longer. Yeah, yeah. Sachan, that's where they have the, uh, they used to have the aerospace section of the oh. Korean government there where they make the, the, uh, the, the jets. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, cool. And I taught there and I got invited. I went, I liked it. I liked Korea. Korea mm. was nice. It's, um, uh, I was starting to get into teaching. I love teaching. I was teaching a little bit in Europe, and then from there, it kind of winded my way to to here. But I had you, and then I got married along the way and had a kid, and uh, and now you that's it. And then I'm kind of you know You're you get, my, my roots are are deep. <laughs> <laughs> and then I blinked, and then next thing you know, I don't know, eighteen years later, I uh, oh, that was my next question. <clears throat> so you've been in country eighteen years. Yes. Wow, that's that's longer than most than the oldest kid in the school. Yes. 18 years. Wow. Okay. I thought I was only going to come for a couple of years. I think my contract originally was two or three years in the yeah, first. Yeah. So I was like, I right, go ahead and check it out. And then, you know, do my drifter thing, move to something else and try something else while I'm still young. But, um, but you're not young anymore, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, whatever the song is, my drifter's days are behind me. That's good. That's good. So you mentioned Europe. You so what were you doing before you came to Korea? Like you, you obviously been in country eight uh, years in teaching in university yeah, school. Yeah. What, what were you doing before that? Uh, I was playing basketball, playing professional basketball. I played for okay. uh, a team in Luxembourg called the Moselle Pikes. Mm -hmm. The Moselle is the name of the river that runs between Luxembourg and okay. Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, and the pike is a fish. It and is. if you ever go and yeah. look for some wine. with sharp teeth. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah, like, yes. uh, like a barracuda. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so if you ever go to look for some wine, mm -hmm. uh, and you find some German wine, and look for the Moselle, oh, yeah, M O S, -S, -S L, yeah. that's yeah. where I lived. Okay. So my house actually was surrounded. My apartment was actually surrounded by grape orchards. Wow! And during that's grape beautiful. time, the lady, the lady downstairs would mm -hmm. always put grapes on my doorstep. Yeah, nice. No, because they had so much laying around. Yeah, of course. And then course. they would take me on little tours of different. Uh, they called them caves. Yep. Uh, and we would take all these little wine tours, and oh, that's uh, fascinating. But it was it was really cool because they have. So how long were you in Luxembourg? For? <clears throat> I was there for one year. Okay. I was there for one year, and then I moved to Germany, which was the city. Actually, my apartment was right on the river, so I could mm. almost throw a rock across into Germany. But I think maybe an hour away, I moved to another city to mm. a different basketball team. Okay. And I was there for a year. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of towards the end of my days of basketball just because uh, body was banged up. Mm. My knees were hurt. My back was hurting. Mm -hmm. My love of the game, I, I, was, I was losing it mm. a little bit. Um, pain will do that to you. It will. <laughs> but I didn't want to. I was still kind of hanging on. <laughs> I was hanging on. You know, you, you know, let go. Of... <laughs> and, uh, because I can still play. I can still do it. Just the love yeah, yeah. wasn't there. And um but it's back now. I mean, you you do a lot of coaching of basketball here, and you seem to love coaching basketball here. Yeah, there's a difference between coaching it yeah, and actually yeah, yeah. playing it on a yep. on a level where you're doing it every day and yes. and, and training and playing <clears throat> and, and competition yeah. pressure and those things. And your yeah. knees are always hurting, and your back is always hurting. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And when you're younger, you can kind of like put that aside and have some yeah. ibuprofen you and no problem. But when you get do that now, can you do that now? I do, but I don't really play any. I don't. Whenever I play anything, it's never like uh, mm. I, I ne I'm always at seventy percent. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because there's no really need to go one hundred percent. I'm not. Uh, no. And if I had, I could do it for maybe thirty seconds. And I'm like, you know what? Why am I doing this? <laughs> I won't feel this tomorrow. Well, you know, it's uh, Mr. Johnson. I think we're going to have to continue this conversation in other stage because it's uh, oh, we, we could talk for ages because it's uh, along with many of the other people I've spoken to. There's so many interesting things about people. Uh, um, but listen, thanks for that first episode, that first chat. But I yeah, and, no, and we'll, we'll touch base as the year goes on. Right, I got much more. I know you have, <laughs> know you have. <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Um, 
continuing the series of podcasts at, at ISB, I thought I'd expand it beyond the secondary school because it's uh, we're one community and it's really uh, interesting to to get to know and to understand uh, different people in our community. So I ventured down to elementary school. Woo! <laughs> Well, rather than just woohooing, could you introduce yourself? Who am I talking to? Sure. My name is Laura Claire Corson, and I'm the grade four teacher here at ISB. It's it, Look, it really is nice to come on down and have a chat. Um, where are you from? I am from Boulder, Colorado in the United States. I haven't been up there. I've been to Colorado, but not to Boulder. It's a nice place. Yeah. I recommend you visit sometime. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you got back there? Did you? Were you I mean, you, you've been out of uh, out of Boulder, Colorado, for a while now because you've obviously got some breadth of experience of teaching. So I usually try to visit every summer. Mm. I didn't go home last summer because yeah. of the because uh, of COVID, but mm. I plan to go home this summer okay. for a few weeks. And how does it compare to the different places that you've you've you know worked and, and taught at? Because uh, from my investigations, and they've been extensive, this course. <laughs> I'm sure you've been, <laughs> you've you've lived and worked and taught in some amazing places. Tell us about it. Sure. So I I am from Boulder originally, but I've also spent some time. I lived in Ireland. I've lived in London. Um, I've lived in Seoul and now Busan, and I've also lived in Kenya, Uganda, and Jordan. And Boulder is the place I've lived the longest, <laughs> um, and I still consider it my home. That's amazing. And have they all been, when you talk about Ireland or London, if you talk about um, in Africa, have they all been teaching? Is that, is that why you've been there? No. So I was in Seoul and Busan and Jordan as a teacher. Okay. Um, but I was in Ireland as an exchange student in high school. Wow. I was in London. Um, I was on a journalistic path at first before I became a teacher. And I interned with a newswire service there in college. How long were you there for? For London, I was there about three months. Okay. Ireland, I was there for a semester, so about half a year. Okay. So when you, so you weren't always going to be a teacher? Not always. No. no. I came actually, so I came to teach English in Seoul mm -hmm. when I was 22 or 23, and I came just on a whim. So I started out of college then? A, a year after, a year or after almost college. a year after. Oh, okay, okay. And my friend said, hey, I heard, you know, that being an English teacher in Seoul is fun, mm -hmm. and I was trying to save money to go freelance for the World Cup in South Africa. Okay. So I thought, Korea sounds cool. Yeah. Why not? Mm -hmm. And I ended up staying five years. I really found that I loved teaching. In Seoul for five years? Yeah, I was in Seoul for five years. Okay. I knew you were in Seoul. I didn't realize it was for so long. Yes, and then and same then, company, the same school, the same people, or did you no, move around? So I, I, I've lived. I lived in three different neighborhoods, and mm -hmm. I worked at a few different schools. Okay. Um, yeah. A couple of private academies, mm -hmm. and then a, uh, an elementary school. So, how does that compare to down at ISB? Like, how does that? I mean, obviously, you're working in English academies, and your sole, sole focus, I assume, is on the teaching of English. Mm -hmm. That's not what's required here. How does how did you how does it different? I mean, there's there are definitely so there are definitely similarities. I think mm. kids are this you know similar mm. all over, sure. both with their enthusiasm sure. and their gusto. Mm. I think I mean obviously here I teach a wider breadth, mm. and um, I became a certified teacher after I lived in Seoul and then yeah, did my right. masters as well. Yeah, um, okay. Okay. But there's definitely similarities here. It's a more international community, whereas sure. in Seoul I taught most. Yeah, I guess all Korean students. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. both both opportunities were really great. So if I go back a stage, Africa. You mentioned some, some very interesting countries. Why the, why the travel there? Because it was fascinating or you just thought, I want to go to Uganda? Or? So I so when I was in London mm -hmm. back during that summer in college, mm -hmm. my boss at the time um, had told me that she had been living, I believe, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And that's where she, I believe, started her journalism career. Okay. And she said, why don't you go? And I said, okay. So, <laughs> so I decided to. Um, but was it for work off. or experience or pleasure or tr I mean, what was it so, for adventure? Or? Everything. I mean, it was, yeah. I was right out of college, yeah. Um, yeah. and I remember I'd had a job offer, I believe, to stay in in the states. I think it was in Colorado, sure. and I I didn't feel like I was ready sure. to to stay in one place. Which yeah, now, yeah. all these years later, I still am obviously wow. not ready to stay in one place. But. Um, so how did you get like what was it? That's a big change. Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. To Uganda. Yeah. 
Wow. Ama amazing though. Like I'll never forget. So I flew from Denver to Nairobi. I forget where mm. I had my stopover. And the man sitting next to me was a Kenyan man. And I remember as we were landing, mm. cause it was the most different place I'd ever been at the time. Sure. And there were all these palm trees and it was November. Mm. And I remember he told me something like your life is going to change now. Mm. And it totally did. You know, I, I didn't, know. I didn't, ex I thought I would maybe go for about a year and then come mm. back, mm. but it really set off, you know, the next decade or so as being an expat. That is, that's awesome. Look, it's been absolutely wonderful. We're having a quick touch base. It's been so nice to uh, to find out some bits and pieces of uh, who you are, and it's been interesting. And I, there are things that I learned today that uh, I didn't know, um, but that's what these podcasts are all about, trying to spread the word and share uh, amongst the community the wonderful wealth and, and bits of, uh, of, uh, of um, people that we have. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun.